Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me for another Spirit Review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the latest limited edition release from Compass Box. It is their Hedonism Quindecimus. Now the Quindecimus word is the Latin word for 15, and they selected that because this is their 15th anniversary bottling. There are only 5,869 of them created, all bottled at 46% ABV. They are all non-colored and non-chill filtered, so that color you get in that bottle in the glass is the exact color that it came out of the casks. Now as I spin the bottle around, you can see it's got a very, very beautiful and detailed label. Uh, but beyond all that, we're going to talk about the whiskeys that are inside it. It is a blended grain scotch whiskey. Now, when you hear grain whiskey, you have to know that it is a combination of cereal grains, uh, unmalted corn, rye, wheat, and some kind of combination, usually with some malted barley. Uh, they cook those up, let them ferment, and then run them through a big column still because we need lots of volume uh, for the blends that you know grain whiskey supply the backbone for, like Johnny Walker, for example. Uh, but once that column still does that distillation, those you know whiskeys are barreled for a while. But in some instances, those grain whiskeys are allowed to mature for very very long amounts of time. I have a 29 year old Strathclyde back there that is amazing. Uh, that just goes to show that sometimes with these grain whiskeys, when given enough time and, and under the right circumstances, you can create very, very beautiful uh, bottles as we have here today. All right, so let's talk about the actual blends that went into it. Uh, because John Glazier was very transparent in what uh, the distilleries, the barrels came from, and so on. Uh, like I mentioned, five barrels, four distilleries, two of those are closed. Uh, the first one from the closed distilleries were the Port Dundas. They used a 25-year-old rejuvenated hogshead cast, and they went 36.6 of the final blend was that 25-year-old Port Dundas. Now, when you hear rejuvenated hogsheads, that just simply means they took that big barrel, they scraped out all that old char, recharred it, recaramelized those interior sugars of that wood, and then filled it. 25 years later, they used it in this blend. All right, 19.4 was a Port Dundas 20-year-old from X bourbon barrels, first filled. That means they just dumped a, the bourbon in Kentucky or wherever in the United States and then shipped that barrel over there. Port Dundas filled it with their whiskeys. It sat for 20 years. Uh, let's see. Next, 18% Loch Lomond. Uh, Loch Lomond was a 32-year-old whiskey, all right, in X bourbon barrels as well. 17.6% was North British 20-year-old ex-bourbon barrel whiskey, and 8.4% was Dumbarton, and that was a 28-year-old ex-bourbon barrel uh, held whiskey, all right? So we're basically talking, this is a 20-year-old grain blend whiskey, so 20 being the youngest whiskey in there, 32 being the oldest. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to know? Uh, that means, basically, you have about Almost two-thirds of this is closed distillery whiskey. It's actually 64.4% to be exact. Wow. So, all right, let's get to the actual nosing and tasting. Enough of the facts, right? That's a lot. <laughs> all right, so on the color, light, it's like a yellow straw he heading towards golden. On the nose. It's big and it's soft at the same time. There's a lot of big aromatics, but they're, nothing's burning, nothing's too big or bold. A lot of caramel. There's golden raisins. Almost a hint of like a, a plum element, some lemons. Vanilla. Sweet vanilla though, it's like a vanilla icing, let's say. Some oak and coconut in the background. Cinnamon and clove providing the spice. Yeah, that lemon is almost like a little bit of a hint of orange in there as well. All right, on to the palette. Good medium viscosity, and maybe a little over that. Not super oily, but definitely more than your your normal. Okay. Mm. Very creamy, almost like a. The initial entry is a lot of caramel, big caramel. 
little saltiness to that caramel, maybe salted caramel, but very big. And then you get that cinnamon and clove on that mid palate, not getting hot. They're just arriving and making their presence known. You've got the raisins. You've got a little bit of that, boy, that vanilla is really running throughout. Uh, but, wow, coconut on the finish with the oak. Just as it knows, it's coming through on the palate. I was searching for that lemon aspect or that orange peel aspect that I was getting on the nose. And I think that arrives right there just before mid palate. Let's see. Ah, oh, yes, right there. As soon as you swallow big caramel, salted caramel, then you get those wisp of like plums, but it's more golden raisins. Um, lemon peel, maybe like, uh, but that, van that sweet vanilla is feeling almost like, like vanilla icing and candied oranges. You know those little oranges with the sugar on them? Uh, that's candy, don't get, don't get me wrong. It's not fresh oranges. Uh, but that kind of element is in there as well. Chocolate on the back end, as we start getting past the cinnamon and clove and we start getting into the oak, it's feeling very chocolatey, the whole time remaining creamy because it's like a vanilla cream that's uh, running throughout. You get to that chocolate, coconut just starts pouring onto the finish. That's really what you chew on a lot on the finish is um, the oak, the caramel, and that coconut. It's big, but it's soft. It's not like a cast strength whiskey that's gonna just explode and envelop in your mouth and transition. This is more delicate. Um, you have to sit there and just relax with it and let the different nuances of flavors kind of come over you and you can work on them and pick them out, but they're all there. Nobody's dominating. But I say nobody's dominating, but that big caramel and vanilla and that coconut on the finish are big players throughout. Mm. Delicious, it's a great whiskey. So I hope you can find it out there. I know retail pricing, I've been seeing it kind of fluctuating anywhere between 160 and upwards of 225, somewhere in there. Uh, but then again, there's only 5,869 of these to go around, so prices will fluctuate. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck finding your bottle, I hope you do. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.